This is 15 Minutes to Freedom. I'm your host, Ryan Idell, and today's episode is New Levels Bring New Devils. Today's episode, I had no idea what I was going to speak about. I asked Kurt for some subject matter, and he gave me a line from T.D. Jake's speech at some point. So I'm running with it. And I'm running with it because it makes sense to me. And it makes sense to me from all the random things that I've been through in my life. I right, think about it for a second. Think about your life, right? I'm going to make it relevant to mine, but follow the same path. Right? You, when we're younger, right, before we drive, it's almost like, I don't know about you, but I convinced myself that the minute I had a car and I had my own freedom, like life would just get easier. Life would be better. And of course it does. You go through all the work to take driver's ed and what that means and to get all your proctored driving hours and that moment of sheer enjoyment, excitement. When you pass your driver's ed test and you're holding that shiny new plastic sheet of paper, right? It's not, I guess it's plastic. It's not a sheet of paper, but the shiny plastic driver's license in your hand and you're beaming, right? Like I got it. I, I can now drive. I can do all the things I want to do. It's like one of the first impactful levels we strive to reach as, a, as an adolescent. It's just that driving. Then you get to the point where you, you start driving and you realize, like, man, I, I have to work to put gas in the car so I can drive to school and then drive to work. And that's that's kind of that kind of sucks, right? That's not very fun. Then you realize because you're 16 and you have no driving record and 16-year-olds are notoriously a bit reckless, that insurance is going to cost $100, $150, $200 a month. Man, so wait, i got to work all these hours just to pay for the gas so I can drive to work. And I need insurance to make sure that I'm legally allowed to do those things. Huh. It's just another little deflation, right? You've, You've reached this new level and then all of a sudden... You're like, man, there's there's just new issues here. There's new problems. Then as you drive that car, right, maybe you're one of the lucky ones that don't get in an accident, right? With me, I, I was never involved in an accident as, a, as an adolescent, really, or even as an adult. But I certainly was no slouch for going fast, and by not going fast made it difficult to keep brakes on a car for a long time. So all of a sudden, you get into maintenance. Right? It's like you've reached this new level, you got to pay for gas, you got to go to work to pay for the gas, you got to go to work to pay for the insurance. And all of a sudden, I got to go to work so I can pay to fix the car that is just getting me from point A to point B. Like, this is all backwards. Like, why did I want this? But during that time period, right, if you're like me, you're going through high school. Like, man, okay, I got this part down. I understand. I'm going to have to work, got the car. I got this. Everything will change when I get to, when I get to college. My life is going to be different. I'm on my own finally. No one can tell me what to do. You're right. No one really can. But you arrive at college the first day or the first week, whatever it would be for you. And you realize how sprawling the campus is. And it's more than likely much more vast than any distance you've had to traverse for your daily class rituals. You have to figure things out real time. You got to figure out where food's at. You're, you're always your head's always on a, a, a swivel, right? And then, no longer in college are the teachers like the high school teachers, right? Like here, we show up at class once or twice a week. You get a lecture, and then we show up the next week. You're talking about something completely different. You're supposed to have read all this stuff on your own without being held accountable. There's no daily homework. All of a sudden, you just have tests, and they're massive and. Instead of being an intricate setting and intimate setting with 25 or 30 people, you're in lecture halls with hundreds of people. Man, this is, this is, this is big stuff here. So you're still at the, at the previous level, right? I'm still having to work, still having to produce, still having to pay gas and insurance and maintenance on the car. But now I also have to worry about class, showing up, getting things done the right way. But eventually that level becomes a little easier. It's no big deal. Okay, now that I'm going to graduate college, now that I'm done, now that I'm leaving, I'm going to go out and make big money, and my life is going to get better. So you go into the real world. You you land that first job. 
you know you have it all under control until you go to look for that first apartment. And you realize that college housing, although it might seem have seemed expensive, when you're splitting it with six people in a two-bedroom apartment, it's really not that bad. And all of a sudden, you're still going to work to pay for the car, the insurance, the maintenance. Now you're going to work to pay for your health insurance and for the apartment you got to have in the right neighborhood with the right views and the right neighbors. Now you got to worry about the political hierarchy of most companies. And how, how are you going to fit in? How are you going to integrate? And just another level, right? You're, you're ascending to a new place. And then don't get me started. Like in that business, like, all right, I'm starting out as a grunt. I'm going to work my way up to the next level. I'm going to make more money. And as the great Sean Combs eventually said, more money, more problems. We think that the money is going to solve things. But as the money increases for most of us, so do our spending habits. So does our debt. So do the issues accumulated and associated with that. The bad decisions we were previously making now just get exponentially more catastrophic based off the income we have behind it. I share that from personal experience. When you go have a bar, a night out with your boys at a bar, you make a hundred grand a year, you might feel like a big dog because you buy people a round of drinks. Right, you leave the bar, you got a $150, $200 bar tab. It's painful the next morning, but you shake it off. But all of a sudden, when you're making close to that much money a month, you go to New York City and you end up with a $50,000 bar tab after night. Instead of buying it for your buddies, you buy it for every person that's ever walked into the bar because the ego hasn't changed. The understanding of the value of money hasn't changed. The amount of effort you have to work to receive the money has changed. But here, there's just a new level comes with new devils, right? There's more people trying to take it from you. There's more people with unscrupulous ideas. I, w- I was one of those people, right? The, the levels of things that we go to are very unique. And that's not only in business, right? I, I believe that's actually relationships too. Like, I don't care who it is that you're dating, married to, even divorce from. When you first got with your partner, either male or woman, man or woman, however you say it, you probably thought they were just one of the most attractive people you had ever seen. It's very unlikely, statistically, that you're getting married to or are married to someone you just don't find to be attractive. But if you look backwards over your life, again, I think most of us, we would have said that every woman or man we have ever dated was attractive. But there's levels to that. You keep ascending up some hierarchical existence where there's levels to the people that you're dating. Then you get to a certain point where the person that you're dating is just as attractive as you could ever imagine. But in that level, there's new devils at the fact of you're not the only one that finds that person to be attractive. They could get a man or woman anytime, anyplace, anywhere they want to. So any insecurity you might have had prior to this moment is now much, much grand, more grand, grander, grandiose. And it also makes you step up your game and show up as a more present man or woman for your partner. Because every bit of this, there is a new level and new devil associated with it, right? I look at my own business right now. Like, man, if I, if I just have five coaching clients, I'm good. Puts food on the table, everybody, everybody's good. Well, five is, five is okay. But I can, I can handle 20. I think if five's good, 20's got to be better. So I take on 20. Well, if 20's good, well, why, why not have 30? And take on 30. I started looking like, well, what am I really doing here? I've now become a slave to the environment that I used to enjoy. I might be making money, but I no longer have a quality of life and I don't enjoy any part of it. Certainly, I enjoy the impact, but I don't really enjoy the stress from it. And so now it no longer becomes the acquisition of clients. It becomes the systemization of how I onboard clients 
and who else I can work with to help facilitate change in people's lives. Which is the doorway for seven coaches to come on board and help me grow the life optimization group. Which completely self-promoting side note, if you have not went to Facebook and joined the Life Optimization Group private Facebook page, you are missing out on consistent value in a community that will be evergreen. When I share that with you, once we hit 1,000 subscribers, 1,000 members, 1,000 participants, I'm going to offer 30 days of complimentary coaching. Every day, hop in, a sequence, a process that I take the clients through that I know will change your life, but I'm not doing it until we hit 1,000. Why? Because I'm selfish. And I add value. I'm not going to charge you for that value, but I need to see a thousand people first. I share all that because the seven, seven individuals are coming internally. They're going to help me scale and grow the business at a level that I hadn't previously seen. And I know that new level is going to re require a new version of me. There's going to be new devils lurking around the corner that I can't even see right now. I can't see them because I haven't experienced it. In my mind, it solves everything, right? I get to work with 10, 12, no more than 15 clients one-on-one. -on -one. I get to have quarterly events like I'm having really as you're listening to this that I've already had. I get to speak in front of large groups twice a year, travel the country, speak a little bit, and life is great. And then in 12 or 18 months from now, I actually cut that down even more and I'm only working with seven or eight clients one-on-one -on -one for a year, high-end clients doing all the biohacking, all the mental rewiring, all the scale and growth and, uh, growth and optimization of their business. It's a whole nother version of what exists. And, and then everybody else gets to work with somebody inside the company, inside of the organization that I know, like, trust, respect, and help train on who they can become. I can't even see the devils I'm going to have to dance with then. I'm excited to meet them because I know I can overcome them. Right, but we have this thing inside of our head that we think once we reach a certain point that all the trouble goes away. Don't get me wrong, producing income at a high level certainly makes it so you have less stress. But does it really? I would challenge you to consider it's just a different type of stress. And certainly, I suppose, once you make millions and millions and millions of dollars a year, it's probably different. I'm not producing at that level. I don't claim to. But the difference incrementally above, I believe it's $80,000 in the U.S. Right? There's a big level of happiness increase. There's a big change in the quality of life when you go from $50,000 to $80,000 a year. But the marginalization, the incremental growth in income versus happiness from $80,000 to $225,000 is nominal. And $225,000 to $500,000 doesn't even exist. And 500,000 to a million, more, than, more often than not, actually starts to go backwards. So you think about the fact of if you're solving just for money, there's going to come a point where the curve actually becomes inverted, where you are less happy with more money. But yet, as I'm saying this, you're shaking your head. I can almost see you right now. I'm like, that's not going to be me. Maybe it's not. Maybe you're the one that it doesn't affect. I believe so much of that happens because we don't take the time to rewire the stories that have limited us up to that point. And all money does is add more fuel to a burning fire. And whether that fire has been burning for good or for burning for not so good reasons, it's going to get hotter. When that fire heats up, it can get pretty ugly. And so I share all that with you because no matter where you're at on that spectrum, I don't care if you're 50 grand or below. I don't care if you're half a million or above. The devils that you're dancing with are choices. And they're there. None of us have all this figured out. But having a new perspective on what is possible is important. Because those devils that you meet, we're all capable of overcoming them. Right? Like We get to decide what's going to beat us and what doesn't. But I would much rather enter into a fight having Mike Tyson switch in and out with me than have to go it alone. Which is why I personally lean into so heavy coaching. Right? Not, not asking you to coach with me, but 
Find a mentor somewhere along the way to help you dance with these devils. Find someone that you know, like, trust, and respect to help navigate the season of your life. It's healthy. It doesn't mean you're less than. I actually challenge you to believe it makes you more than. Because coaching, personal development, self-help, self-exploration, it's literally less than 5% of the market share right now. If you're listening to this, there's a bunch of people that think this is crazy. I would challenge you to consider the crazy ones are the ones that are trying to attack all this shit on their own. So from that place, whether you're inside the gym, right? If you're a, a fitness fanatic and you're, you want to run your first Ironman and you do it, you run, you succeed, then you get the itch, right? I'm a, I want to place top 100 in my age group. I want to go back and I want to, I want to place top 20. And all of a sudden, four or five years pass in your life and you look backwards and while you might have enjoyed it, you've just grown up into more devils. Feet are going to have other issues, knees, hips. It's okay, but it's it's going to come. Same thing inside the relationship, right? We've, we've already touched base on that. As you ascend up and you spend time with people you find to be more quality individuals, they're going to come with additional sets of things to overcome. Whether it's jealousy of people interacting with them, whether it's insecurities internally, there's going to be things. And with business, it's much the same. Right? We think, if you were like me, you thought the more money I made, the better my title was, the more success I had, the less stuff I'd have to deal with. There's always the next rung on the ladder. When I just get to that rung, I'm going to finally feel good. My friend, from what I can share with you personally, that's not actually what our time here on earth is all about. Don't get me wrong. Producing at a very high level is always enjoyable but it's much more enjoyable when it's lined up with your purpose. And when you start to accept the fact that every level has a new set of devils with it, and you produce at a high level from a standpoint of purpose, you'll find out that every day after, you're able to get shit done. 